Jane Matico Mogul Money Entertainment <laughs> Style out Everywhere you never been Style out On the internet and TV Style out Bringing you who you need to see Style out Style out Welcome to Style Out TV. It's Tapia, Joel Rosario Tapia, Turegua, your host as always. And I'm here with a distinguished panel of individuals of a Native American, indigenous, Indian background, a bunch of individuals that are doing a lot of activity in the community. And we're here to talk about something that's going on in the community in Providence that may have international impact. It's called the International Indigenous Peoples Cultural Conference and I'm here with some of the people that are putting this together. So I'd like them to introduce themselves and we're gonna go in to bring it to you first here on Style Out TV. So, right here to my right, go Raymond, ahead. Raymond Tuox Watson, CEO and founder of the Providence Cultural Equity Initiative. Crook Rock, chapter leader, Rhode Island Zulu Nation, and Eastern National Director of NAAIP. Honekapa Makwashim, Moskva Sakam of the Uskapag Nehatik Nahagazit. Tribe and Tool and Sakam of Nihantic Nahagansa Nation. Cool. Um, can you elaborate further on what, the, what, the, what does that mean specifically? Because I, I don't speak the language, so I'd like to know. Uh, Tool and Sakam yes. is strong south wind. Okay. And um, Mosca Sakam, Sakam means chief. Okay. And principal Sakam of uh, the Muscapag uh, tribe. Very interesting. Um, I know in the area here in Rhode Island, we have a lot of um, uh, descendants of what we call Dainos, or Arawaks, people from the Caribbean. And um, I know a lot of them are, are trying to find out about their culture, so I think that this event is going to be very frequented by them. But uh, leading into the first uh, question of the interview, how did we come about with the International Indigenous Peoples Cultural Conference, and what is, you know, wh how did that happen? Sure. So the, the, the idea for the conference itself actually came out of the ongoing work of organizations like the National Association for the Advancement of Indigenous People, Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America, groups that have um, been working to educate American Aborigine on their proper history, heritage, uh, status, and then to inform and then present them with opportunities for remedy and personal advancement. Um, so out of those efforts, a like national and international network of individuals, organizations kind of was built. Um, and this Indigenous Peoples Conference is a way to kind of convene all of that energy into one space um, to create something that's going to be fantastically impactful on an international level as people start to learn about who they are, learn about other cultures, learn about other people's history, so we can all be operating on a general platform of mutual respect and mutual support. That, that sounds very deep and it sounds like a lot of unity. Mm. So um, it sounds very inspiring. Um, can you elaborate further on the, con the, the, the conference itself? And what is the subject matter? Sure. You know, what, what can people look forward to? Sure, so it's gonna be on April 9th at Roger Williams University's uh, School of Continuing Studies, which is at 150 Washington Street in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, we're doing it right in the heart of the city. Uh, Providence is just a fantastic location for artistic initiatives. Uh, so what Providence Cultural Equity Initiative is doing is trying to bring more awareness and more support for cultural initiatives um, because we just feel like in a city that's so highly regarded from an artistic level with all of the cultural history, heritage, and diversity that's in not only the city but the greater area, yes. these need to be high highlighted as well. Yes. Um, so the Indigenous Peoples Conference, it, it kind of fits very well in an atmosphere and an environment like Providence. And also because of the historicity that's here. I mean, the chief spoke a little bit about who he represents, you know, the Nahantic Nahagansa people who are the American Aborigine to this land. And the American Aborigine that were responsible for the first contacts with European colonists when they got here. We're talking uh, 
Mayflower and 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 first Thanksgiving sort of mm. period, early okay. 1600. So yeah. this is that area going all the way back to there, um, and it just seemed like a very fitting environment for something of this nature being the first one to be housed right here in this in this city. So, so that led right into what I thought would be my next question: mm -hmm. Why Providence? Why Rhode Island? Why New England? But there you go, the Mayflower, the the, the whole mm -hmm. thing. It, it makes perfect sense. And, and just. And, and then I'll let uh, Crook talk to some of this as well, but um, one of the things that the cultural conference does is host a culture every year. Yes. You know, because we want to highlight the diversity of the pan-indigenous community. Mm -hmm. So this year, given that there's such a large uh, Spanish-speaking migrant population that lives here in the area, particularly coming from the Taino heritage, okay. um, we definitely wanted to acknowledge and honor the Taino ancestry um, at our first conference here in Providence. So you kind of have the first people who dealt with the first uh, sort of colonial impacts that kind of created this country called the United States, honoring the original individuals who had to deal with European colonialism even before we did, the yes. Tainos. So um, I'll let the brother Crook Rock talk a little bit more about that kind of connection. Yeah, well, you know, um, being in Providence and Rhode Island itself is, um, the only state where the Dominican population is the number one Latin race in the state. And a lot of the Dominicans are actual uh, Taino uh, natives, um, you know, descendants, right? descendants yeah. of, of Taino. So it's really important that we get the message out to our people who are kind of lost in, in that regard. A lot of the Puerto Ricans. Um, don't know that that their heritage is Taino and is you know as we all ally all the indigenous nations all together we have to start to also educate each other each nation needs to learn more about each other as well so you know with with the conference is not only you know people outside of the nations learning about the nations but the nations also learning about the nations yes. themselves so you know is, is very interesting and, and I'm looking forward to being part of it um, as a native Taino Arawak um, and I'm looking forward to meeting other people and, and teaching our people and in the promotion we we teaching and, and in, invite as we invite the people they're actually learning as we invite them everywhere that we go and we let them know about the conference a lot of people want to know more what it's about so you know doing the conference itself leads us to teach more about it, to bring more awareness. Even before it happens, we've already done so much work to bring awareness, and we just want to continue to raise that awareness um, collectively. Definitely. One, one, of, one of the things um, to keep in mind for all our, uh, our viewers, and especially in the area, is that, yes, um, many of us as, as, his, as what we identify as Latinos or Hispanics, um, in reality, we're mislabeled or tag branded so um at the end of the day what our heritage is and our roots are in the caribbean pretty much all the islands in terms of puerto rico uh Boricin, cuba um dominican republic and haiti or hispaniola or quisqueya as you would like to call it also down to the coast of south america these are all areas that were controlled by the arwak and all of the areas that were known as Tainos, also in also the Florida, Bimini, people that are local there, they, the people know about the Seminole, they know about these tribes that actually ended up forming as a result of the wars that were going on. But who was originally there? Some of the Timucua, some of the Tequesta, which are, are also Arawak speakers, and some of them identify as Tainos. So um, this is something that identifies with us and with all of us. We are all um, generally Spanish speaking um, descendants in the Caribbean we're all pretty much descendants mm -hmm. of the Taino so um, I identify with it very much because my father um, identified as a Taino and we were always taught that mm -hmm. that is part of who we are mm -hmm. so um, what would make this conference a resounding success in the eyes of uh, organizers and everyone that's uh, associated with it? Resounding success? Yes. Um, if people come out of there in my opinion having a better understanding of who they actually are. Not the labels that have been thrown upon them for classification purposes, for stripping of land rights purposes, all of that mm -hmm. nonsense that went on. But if people come out of there like, like when I did, when I first 
was able to grasp the understanding of what an American Aborigine means and what that term actually means. Uh, for those who may not know, um, terms mean different things and, and, and you declare certain things when you say them. So we like to use the term American Aborigine because it really gets to the heart of who we are. The original people of these lands called America. Um, and we want to educate people that no, it wasn't always called Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And no, they didn't wipe out everyone that lived there. That's what they told you so that you wouldn't look into this sort of stuff. But now we're in a fantastic position to actually be in a place to kind of share this. So um, in terms of success, it, it looks like people have an understanding of what their identity and status is. Um, in terms of success, it looks like people building up their personal networks so that they can start to interact with, build relationships, especially on a commerce level. Because this isn't just about the cultural aspect of things, very important aspect of it, but we can't just stay stuck on the history. We have to actually be able to move forward. So it's, it's looking um, in that regard, people building relationships in that regard. It also looks like sponsors coming in mm. and really understanding what's going on here and the opportunity that it represents because this is an international movement that's yes. going on. Yes. So they're not just building relationships with people here in Providence. They're not just building pe relationships with people here in New England. We're talking from Louisiana to California to up into Canada to Puerto Rico and the Caribbean islands, and who knows where it goes from there. So to me, success just looks like um, people coming away from the conference excited about the second year, um, actively wanting to be the culture that's hosted in the second year, wanting to know how they can get their, their um, investments in early so they can be that lead sponsor next year. That's really what uh, success for the first annual conference looks like, in my opinion. That's great, and, and I, I completely agree with that because mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense in terms of um, people finding out culturally, but also within the American society and the world society that we live in, everything is commerce, mm -hmm. everything is trade and understanding value mm -hmm. and what people bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'd like to touch on is um, I understand that Crook Rock is gonna be taking a trip to South by Southwest, and during this time, it's also going to be uh, a promo run for the Indi International Indigenous Peoples Cultural Conference where we're going to be uh, going to different cities, different places, and passing out literature and letting people know and getting them aware uh, of the fact that this is happening and when it's happening. Um, would you like to elaborate a little bit further on that? Yeah, well, what happens is that we, we take this ride to the South by Southwest Conference every year as a means of promotion. We're all into the music production, artists, um, everything that has to do with music, I'm involved in, you know, Zulu Nation, so we constantly moving on the road, moving CDs, DVDs, a distribution network, so we just combining, you know, everything that we've been doing in promotion and marketing and combining the movements. The Providence Cultural Equity Initiative. Uh, so it's cool because the, the initiative really was started, and I, I really want the Chief to touch on this, but it was really started about out of my experiences with the Rhode Island Foundation's Emerging Nonprofit Leaders Program, um, they gave me the opportunity to kind of research more about my heritage and history. So I just started going around visiting some of the ancestral sites that in the Hentic, Nahagansett, a lot down in the Chiefs area, down in the South Kingston area. Um, and I was kind of a little bothered by it because I would go to these sites and a lot of them would just be ruins. Mm. You know, and I was like, wow, you know, they, we don't really do a good job of kind of respecting the indigenous culture around here. Um, then I had the opportunity through the program to travel to Mexico uh, with my lovely uh, wife um, for our honeymoon um, and just to see how they deal with cultural history, heritage, and diversity there was kind of just blown away by it. So um, It was much more prominent, much more important. They, it, much, it's much it's used as an economic driver. It's used as a tool to educate the youth about their history and their heritage. It's used as a, a, a tool to draw in international cultural tourism. So all of it's utilized to benefit the community there. Mm -hmm. I agree. The, th the thing that I've noticed is that people, even in, in, in our groups, um, in terms of, quote, Latino, quote, Hispanics, we, we don't really have an idea of um, maybe what we look like because mm -hmm. we're so diverse. And the thing to understand is that, um, I, I understand this because I've done some research on it also, uh, when, when you go back to uh, Bartolomé de las Casas, the 17 volumes of the natural history of the New World, he talks about the people he encountered. When he encountered those people, he says that they were um, of 
different shades, darker, different kinds of hair textures, but not unlike Ethiopians, not unlike Africans, not unlike other people, but they were they were not what would you would typically think right now based on the image that is portrayed of what you talk about as Aboriginals or Native Americans. So um, I think it, it needs to be touched on because we need to understand that um, there's many different types, especially now after um, after the American society has grown and, and mixed. But uh, at the end of the day, it's still indigenous culture. It still needs to be talked about and it's still part of our history. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that, that, that sounds, you just touched on it and it just reminded me of, of, of what I think about it. So um, one more thing to talk about is that we're talking about something going on real soon, April 9th, mm -hmm. this is going on downtown Providence, was that 80 Washington Street? 150 Washington. 150 Washington Street, downtown Providence, Roger Williams University. Can, can we send a shout out to Taino Palermo, uh, head of the, Dr. Taino Palermo, head of the uh, community development program. Um, he's the one who really was able to solidify the relationship with Roger Williams University. So we definitely want to acknowledge them uh, for the proactive support um, because their name added to this event really takes it to a whole other level of uh, respect and people willing to look at it as something that's not just going to happen for this year, but is going to be going on down the road. So we're, sure we're coming at it from the standpoint of building long-term relationships with us. We're not just looking for you to throw something at us because, mm -hmm. oh, keep the Indians happy, but mm -hmm. invest in us because this is yeah. going to be something that's going to add to the overall vitality and vibrancy of the city. Um, and we're looking to do this over and over and over again. So Culturally. And that, like they said, our export here... It's culture. Uh, the, the only thing that people can come and see here is art and culture and a lot of nice architecture. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's really about people. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it beckons and people need to learn more. And we would love to, to see you over there at the International Indigenous Peoples Cultural Conference, April 9th. Um, and I'm proud to bring this to you on Style Out TV. I'm proud to be here on this panel with these distinguished individuals that are taking their culture seriously. And I just want to extend an invitation to the uh, Puerto Rican community, the Dominican community, the Cuban community, to the Haitian community, the Jamaican community. Matter of fact, all of the community, the, the, the American community, the, all of us need to support these things because at the end of the day, um, when you look into the culture, you find that we're all, we all have aspects of each other's culture, mm -hmm. and um, this is what we're doing here in America. Everybody's finding out more with more history, ancestry, and all these different things. So it beckons to you. Find out more about your culture. Find out who you are so that you can properly tell your children who they are and so that you can properly stand in your proper stature, in your proper position. So... One thing I'd like to do before we close the interview is everybody throw that thumb up. This is what we do on Style Out TV. Peace. Peace. Style Out TV, April 9th, Indigenous Peoples Conference. Keep that in mind and keep supporting the movement. Stay tuned, pay attention. We're going to be bringing that to you. Peace.